a lot of times, landlords are responding to people and saying, oh, your race has been rejected. What does that mean? What is this criteria like? And why are you rejecting someone based on their race? There have been many cases where we've gone to a property is like, wow, this house is amazing. And agents like, oh, sorry, no Indians. My parents would be like, oh, okay, cool. And they would just walk away like it was perfectly normal. The landlords are actually not racist. This is as simple as having simple stigmas to say that, well, the landlord has a perception, a long-lasting urban myth that Indians cook curry and the curry smell sticks into wall. Siddhar Karthik started renting when COVID-19 hit. The desire to have his own space led him to the decision to rent a place of his own. But he has faced obstacles renting in Singapore's property market as landlords screen prospective tenants based on their race. I'm Sid. I'm currently working in the digital marketing space and I've been in Singapore for about 22 years. Uh, my family moved here from India in 99 and I've been here ever since and Singapore's home. <laughs> Pretty much that's all I know really. Singapore is made up of a dominant ethnic Chinese group with a quarter making up Malays, Indians and other ethnicities. The multiracial and multicultural makeup plays an important part of Singapore's identity and is worded into the national pledge. The first time it happened I was like, ah oh, okay, whatever. Like, it's happened before. My, my family has only rented properties here and there have been many cases where we've gone to a property and it's like, wow, this house is amazing. And agents like very, very, very happily, oh, sorry, no Indians. My parents would be like, oh, okay, cool. And they would just walk away like it was perfectly normal. It's happened to me in 2005. It's happened to me in 2020. 2020. It will happen to me two years from now. I'm very confident of it. As the pandemic draws out, the rental market is booming with an increasing pool of renters permanent residents or long-term pass holders returning to Singapore, or Malaysian workers who cannot travel between borders due to travel restrictions. And with the continued work-from-home situation, a new group of renters like Sid are emerging. Me and my two other friends were also Indians working in Singapore. We started looking for it out somewhere about just after Circuit Breaker ended. You've got budget, you've got location, You've got how far is it to work? You've got is the you know is it a condo? Is it, is it a HDB? Do I have a gym? All these other considerations. And then there's a sixth one, which sometimes we call the WhatsApp DP test. Like you know, what's your race? Like do you fit the profile? And it it becomes a real limitation to finding a place. So about 40-50% of the houses, we were able to secure the viewings. I think after a point, we started getting rejections basis of profile, basis of race. And some would explicitly say, oh, sorry, the profile does not match. In a 2019 YouGov survey, almost one in four Singaporeans experienced rental racism. Nearly half of all Indians, 34% of Malays, and just 18% of Chinese reported this. Rental racism um, has been a topic that has been going on, I would say, for decades. Now, uh, to be fair, I'll say it has improved uh, the number of things that has actually gotten better. For example, we used to be in a place where even listings explicitly were mentioned no Indians, no PRC, uh, which is obviously very disrespectful and very hurtful uh, for some races and some nationality. And that has gone away and there are, there are actually government rulings uh, surrounding that to protect the dignity of certain races and, and um, nationalities. However, it's not fully gone away. There are legal guidelines for this, laid out by the Council for Estate Agents, the governing body that oversees real estate transactions on ethical advertising. But despite these guidelines, there are always ways to get around it. So I think a lot of people were not even engaging in that conversation with us when it comes to uh, a, a, a rental agreement, right? It's, for example, if you would say, I don't want you cooking so much, or I don't trust your ability to pay rent. Either I prove it or I can sort of say, OK, fair, let's move on. But that opportunity was not given. His frustration led him to share his experience on Facebook. Just the blanket rejection of someone, basis of a preconceived notion of who they are, 
when I kept getting it again and again and again, I made the decision to make Singapore home. But I, the anger I had when I made the post eventually was like, Singapore is not home, is it? Like, this is the only home I have, this is the only home I know now. And you know, most of my life is here, but why is my home not accepting me was the broader question. So many of my friends or my friends' friends have sent me messages on Instagram or Facebook or WhatsApp to say, hey, did anything happen from that post? Because I'm facing this currently and they'll send me like five, six screenshots. On a scale of one to 10, where are we? <laughs> not bad. Really? What when is that? we started, it's a seven. Seven? Mm. Mm. I just remember when you messaged me saying, <laughs> You, because you turned off, you hit the post, right? Yeah, After a while, just do comments. Some came into my like my messenger, messages, messenger requests, and I was like, "How free are you to come and attack me?" It's like one of those things where, because it's been so implicitly accepted, mm. you know, people don't see a wrong in it. Also, you, you feel like you're making a like a mistake if you stand up for yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Such practices has led real estate platforms like 99.co to create tags for renters who face discrimination. The platform also holds sharing sessions with agents on how to work with landlords. I would say that the landlords are actually not racist. This is as simple as having simple stigmas to say that, well, the landlord has a perception, a long-lasting urban myth that Indians cook curry and the curry smell sticks in the wall. Now, if you think of the agent's position, it's actually pretty challenging for them to sort of police your own customer, <laughs> which is why we tried as much as possible to create this platform for the agents to be able to have this conversation. While agents are bound by the Council for Estate Agents, or CEA, there is no legal enforcement against landlords. The law cannot force a landlord to rent his or her property to someone that he or she is not willing to do so. It is difficult for a prospective tenant, you know, to argue or to, or, or to demonstrate in a court of law that he or she has been discriminated against, right? Because he or she would have to provide the evidence because he or she is making the allegation. Landlords could conceivably have other criteria, such as who they think, you know, would better maintain the place. They may also seek to avoid having to deal with unfamiliar cultural practices. Rental racism, you can say that it's a microcosm of how we relate to each other in Singapore. It is a mixture of systemic kind of uh, ideas of inequalities in which it's uh, already endemic to the system and at the same time also the product of the way people think about other people. When a landlord refuses to rent, say, to a certain uh, ethnic group and to jump to the conclusion it's because that, that it's because of someone's ethnicity would not be a good thing because it is informed by stereotype. It is a belief that because someone belongs to an ethnic group that everyone from that ethnic group will behave the same way, which is actually not true. Sid's grievance is one of a long line of racial issues that has been simmering beneath the veneer of racial harmony. But I think it's a racist that the Indian prey on Chinese girl. Prey! With a growing number of highly publicised incidents that is bringing up the issue of race to the forefront. The recent uh, spates of racist uh, incidences that has happened is certainly uh, worrying, but I would uh, refrain from saying that they are something new, right? Because I think that uh, race, uh, you know, instances of racism have happened even before the pandemic. So this person says, when I was seven, someone said my hair was oily and smelly. When I was 12, my friend put a cocoa crunch on my hand and said, look, it's gone. When I was 17, a friend said, he won't like you, you're Indian, how can? When I was 19, someone said, wow, you're really pretty for an Indian, if only you were fairer. When I was 21, I applied for a job only to be told, sorry, only Mandarin speaking preferred. Um, my name is El Sharvesh, I'm the co-founder and editor of Minority Voices Singapore. So what led me to start this platform? Like, I, growing up, I don't think I felt like someone was listening to me and the people around me. So I don't want someone else to feel that way. When COVID-19 broke out within migrant worker dormitories in late 2020, an op-ed by Chinese newspaper Lian He Zhao Bao suggested that the South Asian migrant culture was partly the cause behind the exponential spread of the disease. 
So they talked about how they eat with their hands and they hold hands and they sit outside and stuff like that. Um, I found that extremely offensive and insensitive and very blatantly racist because um, if you're targeting a South Asian migrant worker's culture, then you're also targeting someone who's Indian Singaporean. We all have the same ancestry. We all come from literally like the same region. Um, I eat with my hands. We sit on the floor. It's a very like we sit on the floor and eat. It's a very common like practice. A lot of people talk about their experiences in school and that resonates with me. I think if you ask any ethnic minority person, they'd probably tell you the same. It's not just people sending in their stories, it's also people like reaching out to our Instagram and like just asking for like some sort of support. Sometimes it's not that they want their story to be published, they just want someone to listen to them. I read all these stories and sometimes I'm like, I just feel so angry and sad and I'm like, policies can change and all that, like in time and all that, but what can we do? that will change the mindset of people. I think it's very difficult. Within the last two months, Minority Voices gained 20,000 followers and received message requests daily. So I think it definitely increased because of the recent incidents that, that's been happening in Singapore. I don't think, so as a majority like race person, like you're not navigating Singapore ever thinking about your racial identity. I go into a space or in a work setting where like I'm the only brown person and like people are always speaking in Mandarin. I am constantly thinking that am I the issue or like how am I supposed to fit into this work culture kind of thing. So I think for people who are Chinese, like yes, you will obviously get discriminated against, but you will never get discriminated against for the colour of your skin or your ethnicity. I don't think Singapore is racist. I personally believe that people are given a fair chance for like, uh, at an overview, but racism does exist at various levels of society. I think we have an opportunity and there's been a lot of instances recently to have that conversation. And instead of attacking the minority, maybe we can all take a step back and think about your three friends who were minorities in school or have you done something that might have been unfair to them. Don't judge a book by its cover. It's as simple as that. It's a saying we all know, but we all do it.